7.3. We are solving two-step inequalities today. So I can solve two-step inequalities. Key terms, no new ones, still just doing the same thing. So to solve two-step inequalities is the same way as solving two-step equations. So remember from equations, we did the, we have to do inverse order of operations. So we will add, subtract first, then multiply, divide, and then if we have them later on, exponents, parentheses. So for this first one, I'm gonna add three to both sides. I'm gonna get four D greater than or equal to 12. Then I'm gonna divide by four. We're gonna get D greater than or equal to three. Now remember with inequalities, we also have to have those graphs. So I put three in the middle. Remember one bigger, one smaller. It is equal to, so we're gonna have a closed circle. And then I'm gonna plug my numbers in. Is two greater than or equal to three? Nope, is four greater than or equal to three? Yes, it is. So my arrow is gonna go that way. Okay, so you can see identical two equations, just we have this added graph. All right, so next one, we're gonna add four to both sides. We're gonna get five H greater than or equal to 15. I'm going to divide by 5 and get h greater than or equal to 3. And then I'm going to put my graph in here. 3 in the middle, 4, 2. Again, closed because it's greater than or equal to. There we go. Is 2 greater than or equal to 3? Nope, is four greater than or equal to three? Yep, and so that's the way my arrow goes. Okay, so we're gonna now subtract 10 because it's being added. We get G divided by negative nine greater than two. We're gonna multiply both sides by negative nine and we get G and negative 18. What do we remember from six or seven one? See how I multiplied both sides by a negative? We have to flip the sign. That's from seven one part one. So we really get G less than negative 18 because we multiplied both sides by a negative. And then we're gonna add our number line in negative 18, negative 17, negative 19. This is not equal to, so it's gonna be open. And then we're gonna go negative 19 less than negative 18. Yes, it is. So that's the way our error is gonna go. Do not forget about that flipping. I didn't do it to the first one or the second one because I didn't divide by negatives. I divided by positive, so that's why I didn't have to do that. Okay, so Serena wants to, uh, to complete their, the first three miles of a 10-mile run in 45 minutes or less. At a steady pace, oh, at a steady pace, the inequality 10 minus 75 hundredths P less than or equal to 7 can be used to find P, the pace, in miles per hour she can run to reach goal. Solve the inequality, then graph and interpret the solution. So the 10 minus the pace is because that's the th we're taking away that three miles and that's why this is seven as well, because we took away that three miles. And so we're just trying to find it for one specific part of it, not the whole thing. And so that's why we end up subtracting. Um, and the 75 hundredths comes from 45 minutes because 45 minutes as a decimal in miles per hour is 75 hundredths. So what's really nice is that they wrote it all for us. I'm gonna rewrite it here. And then we're gonna solve. So I know it looks like we're subtracting 10, but remember we're actually not, that's a positive 10. 
this is the thing that's negative. So we're going to subtract 10 from both sides, and we get negative 75 hundredths p less than or equal to negative 3. And the reason it's less than or equal to because we want to do it in that amount of time or less, right? So we want to do it in that amount of time or less. So if we can do it faster, that would be great. So now we're going to divide by negative 75 hundredths. Now don't forget, we just divided both sides by a negative. So we need to flip our sign. And we get P is greater than or equal to a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And we need to go find out how many times 75 hundredths goes into three. But remember, we go one, two, one, two. So it's really 75, 75 into 300. So let's do 75 times four. That's 20, 28, 29, 30. There it is. Perfect. Four. And so we got, she has to do it in four miles per hour or faster. That's what that means. Now we need to graph it. So we put four, one bigger, one smaller equal to, so we close it, is 3 greater than or equal to 4? No. Is 5 greater than or equal to 4? Yes. And so she has to do it in 4 miles per hour or faster to make her goal of 45 minutes. All right, so um, we have at Gas and Wash Gasoline sells uh, for $4 a gallon and a car wash costs $12. Perica wants to have her car washed and keep her total purchase under $60. The inequality 4G plus 12 less than 60 can be used to find G, the number of gallons of gas she can buy. Determine which, if any of these values, is a solution. G equaling 10, G equaling 11, or G equaling 12. So we first have to solve for G before we can determine if 10, 11, or 12 work. Okay, so why don't you pause and solve for G and graph it, and then um, unpause and see if you got the same solution I did. So we're going to first subtract 12. We get 4G less than 48. All right, don't forget to borrow. So I got 48. And then we're going to divide by 4, and we got G uh, less than... 12. Okay, I didn't flip it because I didn't divide by a negative. So we're going to graph this. 12, 13, 11. I'm going to put 10 on here just because it was one of the questions. It's less than, so it's going to be open, meaning 12 cannot work. Oh, I think I just answered part of our question. Right? If I plug 12 in, 12 is not less than 12. It's equal to. So we know that 12 doesn't work now because it has to be less than 12 to work. And then if we plug in 11, is 11 less than 12? Yes. So that means 11 works. But so does 10 because 10 is less than 12. So that's why it says which, if any, of these values works. Remember with inequalities, more than one option works. So what that means is that Harika, to keep her purchase below 60, can get 10 or 11, but cannot get 12. 12 would make the cost go above 60. And there we go. So yes, 10 and 11 work, but not 12. All right, things to remember. Just the main one, which is always, always important. Flip the sign when multiplying or dividing. Oops. By a negative to both 
sides. It's that important. I'm going to say it every time we talk about solving inequalities. Okay, it's that important. All right, so here's your independent practice. Solve it, and then don't forget to graph it. See you next time.